Did you go to reboot your computer or start it up and get this error? The error here on the screen says that there's a boot configuration data file error and it's referencing the BCD uh, location and there's an error, error code which is uh, critical and it's also pointing to the fact that you have UF, UEFI boot which means that it's a little bit of a newer boot system and a lot of the videos or articles online already have information on MBR boot which is uh, most likely probably not going to apply to you if you have a newer machine so this should apply to anyone and on top of that the cause could be a virus or it could also be um, this corruption or maybe you lost power at the wrong moment and that corrupted the machine and this video will help you correct it and get you going so that your machine can turn on and boot properly okay so the first thing we need is windows installation media so um, if you have a usb drive of the media um, or technically a dvd possibly you can use it but otherwise you need to go to a working computer and just uh, go to google search for windows 10 installation media and the first one here says create installation media for windows and in here um, you click on the Windows 10 option, and then inside of here, at the top of the page, you scroll down, um, and you want to create installation media. So you download the tool there. Um, once it downloads, you are then going to go to downloads and go ahead and run it. And then it is going to uh, download a few things. At this point, we're going to accept the uh, license terms. Okay, then finally it asks uh, what you want to do. Uh, we want to make media. Uh, we'll click next. We're going to do English, Windows 10, 64 bit. That's pretty standard. And what you'll do is you'll plug in a flash drive into this working computer um, it has to be at least eight gigs pop it in and then hit next and select it um, in our case just for this um, example we're going to make a file instead but you you would make a flash drive since you need to boot to it um, and then here i'm just going to save it so it's pretty much the equivalent right now of writing to the usb drive at this point as this is copying the data uh, to the flash drive, in my case, it's writing to the ISO. Um, that while that's happening, we wanted, I wanted to discuss the BIOS. Um, so prepare, uh, I guess, the concept of going into your BIOS. Um, this is a good website. We'll put it in the description uh, from Tom's Har Hardware. It shows a bunch of manufacturers and how you get into the BIOS. Um, Pretty much, you know, for the big guys out there, you know, it looks like it's an F2, F12, um, F1, possibly Lenovo. And with that, you're going to have to um, either click, you know, press that button to get into the BIOS, or um, you can possibly press that, get a list of what you're going to boot to, and select, I need to boot to the USB flash drive on the, on the computer that's not booting. And so you can technically um, either get into the BIOS, go to boot settings, and tell the system to boot to any external media that's on there. More than likely, it'll show your actual flash drive that's connected. So um, the main idea is that once this flash drive is ready to go, you'll have to interrupt your computer from booting because it'll keep giving you the error message because um, it won't know to even talk to the flash drive and we're still um, making the media so it downloaded everything that was needed and now it's actually making the media at this point again while we're waiting here um, this is an article just from Dell that um, kind of gives you a quick idea of what it, you would do so once you get into the BIOS of the uh, computer that won't boot going to go to the main menu uh, boot settings UEFI BIOS boot settings 
in the boot sequence. And you'll have to adjust and find the flash drive that you have. And then either sometimes you have to press plus or the up arrow to get it to the top. It has to be in front of your hard drive for the computer. And then you exit and hit yes to save the settings. And then that would um, get you in the proper setup ready to actually connect and boot to the USB drive. So in my case, uh, the ISO is not complete. I can use it uh, to boot to it. And uh, you can also burn this to a DVD if you don't have a flash drive. Um, so you could do what I did and burn it to a DVD. Um, or in your case, you take the flash drive, plug it into the computer, and then we're ready to start um, the repair. Just click to finish and it goes away. And this is the actual ISO that was created. It looks like it's a little less than five gigs. Okay, so this is kind of showing the boot like on your computer. Um, it's gonna ask if you wanna press any key to continue and we have to make sure to do that. Um, it says like to boot to DVD drive or in your case, the USB. And, um, and then you'll get this screen. And once we get this screen, uh, we know that it actually interrupted the boot and it is in good shape in the sense that the um, flash drive or the DVD or the uh, file actually connected and allowed us to uh, proceed. So we hit next. And what's critical here is you don't want to hit install now because that will actually um, either erase the computer or it will get rid of many things on the machine. Um, it can be even as bad as deleting the whole machine as well. So you gotta be very careful not to do install now. Uh, click on repair your computer. And then in here, you'll have some options. Um, like if you ever got to this type of a screen, you know that you could kind of force it to use a USB. Um, you can also turn off the machine. You can kind of exit and continue, but we know that that's not gonna work because your machine keeps crashing. So you're going to click on uh, troubleshoot and then um, and then in here, this could be worth your while. Um, there, there are instances where this startup repair could work. Um, we're not going to do that because a lot of the times it doesn't, but you can try that. If it still doesn't boot, you just do the same process again. You uh, shut the machine off, make sure the flash drive is in, turn it on, make sure the BIOS picks it goes to it, press any key on the keyboard, and then you'll get back to this menu and you can try um, again. Another thing you could do as well is system restore. When you do that, it will ask you um, what date was the, the last system restore that you'd be able to use. Sometimes you won't have any, sometimes you will have one or two, you know, within the last couple days. You can always try that. Um, but uh, many times it'll just say it failed if it's still that uh, BCD error. So those two errors, repair options work well if you actually just um, have maybe other boot problems that are not necessarily that BCD. Uh, but this one is the command prompt. That's the option we need. Okay, now these commands are all gonna be listed inside of the uh, description, but we pretty much kinda wanna show you how it works and. I guess let you know that there's some variables in here that change just based on the machine. So um, it's no big deal, but I'll let you know how to find out what's different for you versus what you see on my screen. So we're going to type in disk part, which is pretty much a program that can let you know um, what partitions or disks are on um, your system. And so we're going to just list disk so we did this part then now we inside of there we do list disk um, it's showing us here that we have one disk which is disk zero so we're going to select it select disk zero disk zero is now selected and we're going to list the partitions on it which are like the different either drive letters or different drives that are on there um, and then in our case what we need to look for is the system partition, which is excellent that it's here. And um, 
Another system that we actually did recently that did have this problem, it was actually the system partition was partition one. Um, but in this case, in this machine that we're using, uh, just for this demo, it's pretty much partition two. So we're gonna do select partition two. And we're gonna assign it a letter. We'll, we'll do S for system, pretty much. And then now we know that it was given the letter S, which is similar to your C drive, which is the letter S drive, so that's good. And normally you can't get to it, especially when you're in Windows, but now we can. So we're gonna exit, and then we're out of disk partition. We're gonna do S colon, enter. We're gonna be now in there. And just for good habit, we're gonna do DIR. And we are looking to see if it has something to do with UEFI boot, which this directory does. So that's um, really good that we now see data on S, which we didn't have access to before. And in the case of the machine that we actually worked on, it, it did actually have a virus and it had tons of files in here. And it had like what appeared to be stuff from Linux and a bunch of stuff. So that machine was, uh, pretty hosed up and we want to make sure that, um, you know, either way you cut it, we're going to repair it and fix it here. So um, in here now, we're going to um, go ahead and format the whole um, S drive. Uh, but before, before we do that, we're going to make sure that we know that the C drive is the right drive for Windows. Um, and right here it tells us that yeah this this is the good thing was that in this case this c drive is actually the c drive of the machine um you do want to make sure um the way that i did that was i just did c colon and then i did dir right after to see what's inside um and here we could see that you know this is uh, pretty much equivalent to the files on your machine if you wanted to, you could even go in a little further, say CD users to make sure, and in here DIR, to make sure that this is the, these are the actual users on your computer, and these are the actual files or uh, documents you need. You can even go as far as going into the, the user directory. You can then try to go into documents, and then DIR. You can see that was the ISO we made earlier. So we know that's, um, that C drive is the correct uh, location of Windows. You need to make sure you know what that is in case something messed it up and made it a B drive as a boy or D drive as a dog. You just wanna make sure. Um, in this case, it was C and it's good. Uh, but going back to S now, uh, and again, we'll just view it. You'll see it's EFI. Um, so that we know that's the boot location. That's what tells Windows where to go, how to boot, um, how to start up or tells the machine that at least. So we're gonna go ahead and format S colon, um, that's a capital. It's gonna be a space after format, a space after the colon. I'm gonna do slash, uh, forward slash FS colon for file system. And we're gonna make it FAT32. So uh, the only spaces are after the format, which is spelled wrong here, format, and then the space after this colon. And it says, uh, enter the current volume label for drive S system. And then at that point, you're gonna, it was asking if you wanna proceed, we're gonna hit yes. Um, would you like to force a dismount? Yes. So just all capitalize and then enter the do volume label. We're gonna call it system and it is good to go. Let's see, so it's saying we're all set, format complete. So now that that's done, um, we're gonna do a DIR, and it should be empty. So you see how that's gone. That's, so that's excellent. So now we're gonna do the command that saves the day. It's called BCD boot. And now that we've wiped away everything on S, we're gonna rebuild it. So we're gonna say BCD boot C colon slash 
Windows, because that's where Windows installation is. Um, we're going to do forward slash lowercase s. S colon is where we're going to write it to. And then space forward slash f. And the type is going to be UEFI. So again, BCD boot space C colon backslash windows space forward slash S space S colon space forward slash F is in Frank space all caps UEFI. And they're created. And then now if we want to, we can just hit DIR again. And there it is. It's back in there. And then we will type in exit. And we will click on, uh, we'll say, uh, turn off your PC, can't hurt, just have it off. And then, um, okay. And then now what we will do is we'll start the system up. And at this point, we'll see if it uh, boots. And, and this is Hyper-V, but you'd see like, uh, Dell, Lenovo, HP, whatever it is. And um, at this point, we should be in Windows. There you go. So if this was uh, complicated for you or seemed very advanced, then I would suggest providing this to someone you use for your IT help or someone that's familiar because there are um, many things that you could do that'll end up messing your machine up. So for example, you could erase your whole um, C drive by accident, which would be all your data and your files. So another reminder to make sure you back up your system if you can. Obviously, before you have this type of issue, um, use you know any type of system that'll allow you to have your data in multiple locations securely. Um, and then you know another recommendation to make sure you have multi-factor authentication on all your systems, especially if you use like a, a OneDrive or a Dropbox system make sure everything's protected with uh, multi-factor authentication which is the secondary like six digit code that's a text message to you or utilizing like uh, tools like Authy or um, pretty much you know like Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator stuff like that so uh, but this is it so this helps you get the system up and running um, you most likely then want to get into Windows <laughs> install or update your antivirus do a full scan of the machine in case it was damage from a virus. Um, if you know that the, this happened due to power outage or something weird happening, um, you know, when the system was turning on or something like that, then you, there's a good chance that it doesn't have a virus. But if you saw a bunch of stuff inside of there where it just said for me, uh, UEFI directory, if you had other things in there, most likely it's a virus. I would just scan the machine for uh, you know, just to make sure, prevent that um, nothing else will happen again. But otherwise, you're all set, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.